Hello, this is Jerry Flynn, and today I'm going to show you how to use the 3D Constraint System in MicroStation Connect Edition to set up constraints on this old-time Grasshopper Steam Engine and create an animation that would be difficult, if not impossible, to achieve in V8i and can be easily achieved once you set up the constraints in the Connect Edition. So I'll go ahead and play the animation so you can kind of see the motion that is correct. Uh, if you were to try to do this with keyframes and, and get that piston to stay inside that cylinder at all times, it'd be really difficult to take a lot of brute force keyframing to get this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to set this up. Okay, now as you can see, I'm in MicroStation Connect. I'm going to go to the Modeling task and the Constraints tab, and I'm going to use a Concentric Constraint. And I'll uh, zoom in here on the block, the bearing block, and I select the inside hole, and I'll select the shaft of my wheel. And you can see the markers indicating that I now have Concentric Constraints there. And now I'm going to um, connect the connecting arm, uh, select the hole, and then I'll select the pin on the offset arm of my wheel. Then I'll go up to the upper end of that connecting arm and I'll select the hole. And then I'll select the pin on the main beam. So I'll select the main beam, select that pin, and now I have concentric constraints there. And then I'll do the same on the secondary beam. I'll select the hole, and then I'll select the, the pin on the main beam. I'll go to the other end here, and I'll connect up these two arms. So these link arms, I'll select the inside hole, and then select the pin, which is connected to the main beam. And I'll do the same thing for the other one on the other side. I'll select the hole first, and when it highlights, then I'll select the beam, and then I'll select the pin. And you can see the markers indicating that I have that constraint. I'll go down to the bearing block, and now on this bearing block, there's a pin that's separate. So I'm going to go ahead and select the inside hole of the bearing block, and then I'm going to select the pin, and I'll constrain that pin to the block. And then I'll select the link arm, select the hole, and then select the pin. And I have that constraint. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Select my link arm hole, select the pin, and now I have that constraint. So I'll go over to the other end here and the link arm that connects to the piston, I'll select the inside hole, select my main beam and select the pin, and now that's constrained. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and get this other bearing block. I'll select the hole on the bearing block and then the pin on the secondary beam and constrain that. Let me rotate the view a bit here. So I'm kind of looking down at the piston and I'm gonna take that link arm that connects to the piston I'll select the inside hole, and then I'll select the piston and select the pin in the piston so that that's constrained to the piston. And then I'll go ahead and constrain my cylinder wall, so the outside cylinder wall, actually the inside cylinder wall, to the outside surface of my piston and constrain that so that remains concentric throughout the motion. So all I have left to do, I need to go ahead and fix my uh, bearing blocks so they don't move around. So I'm going to add some fixed constraints. So I'll select my bearing block and select a face and constrain it. And you actually need a couple of Fix constraints here to keep that from moving. If you only put one, it could possibly slide. So constrain it in both directions. Same thing on the other side here. So 
So I select this space, fixed constraint, and then one of the edges, another fixed constraint. So that's going nowhere. And back to the bearing block for the wheel shaft, same thing. I'll fix this edge and then the bottom edge. All right, so that's fixed going nowhere. Now all I need to do is uh, go to the uh, visualization task window in on my wheel. I'm going to create an actor out of the wheel. So go to the visualization task, use the create actor tool, and I want this actor to rotate about the y-axis. I'll go ahead and rename it as well. I'll make it a uh, wheel for a name. So I select that wheel. Uh, I'm in center snap mode, so I'll snap to the center of the wheel shaft. That's the point at which it's going to rotate. Now all I need to do is script that actor to rotate. And it's going to be 720 frames long, so it's going to be 10 degrees per frame. So 10 asterisk frame, lowercase frame, and a preview. And you can see that my grasshopper beam is, in fact, working correctly now that I've constrained it. I'll go ahead and switch to uh, a nice illustrated shaded view. Turn off the markers and I'll turn on the level with my wood beams. And we'll preview the animation and you can see I can actually rotate the view while it's in motion and you can see that piston perfectly staying inside that cylinder. So super easy in the Connect Edition. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.